it's your host Tori and who is ready to be petty? I hope you guys are doing well. I'm trying a more upbeat intro because I listened to the first episode which is literally the most embarrassing thing in my life because I absolutely hate listening to myself talk which sounds super like redundant and, and dumb because I am a podcast host but um, I really do hate it, so it's really excruciating to hear yourself talk. But I realized I sound so down in the dumps and like not excited to talk to y'all, which I really am always excited. And I've been like realizing that I start with my like, hey, what's up? And that's usually how I like answer the phone as well. Um. I get a lot of flack for it because it doesn't sound like I'm excited to speak to the person that I'm speaking with. So I'm just going to be like, hey, it's me, Tori. (laughs) Anyways, I hope you're doing well. Um, It's been about a week since I talked to you guys last on my last episode. And I talked about New Year's and 2019 and setting my intentions or my resolutions for this year. And you guys, I'm not doing well. I'm thriving. No, that is not true. I'm surviving not thriving. Because, well, uh, I did it again. I fell into a hole. Um, not down the stairs, which I've also done twice this week for some weird reason. Um, but I fell into a Netflix hole. And I found a new TV show that I'm obsessed with, Las Chicas del Cable. And I don't know, if you listened to episode one, you know that I binged Grand Hotel in probably record time. I'm probably the world record holder, Um, which is, it's crazy. There's um, this other Spanish learner. Um, I take classes and about once a month we see each other. We're in different groups, so... We just see each other at like little meetups and I'm trying to make it sound way cooler than it is, but (laughs) meet each other for like conversation class. And um, he was the one that that actually first introduced me to Grand Hotel. And at that time, he was like at episode like 53 of 66. Um, There are 66 episodes in all three seasons. And he was like, oh, you should watch this show. I think you'd really like it. Um, so I saw him a month later and we realized that we had both finished the series at the same time, which of course I had to like lie and say that I was off work and away sick with the flu or something because I had to pretend that I had like a life outside of Grand Hotel, which is not true. Like I binged 66 episodes in again record speeds and it was like so embarrassing because he had watched like the remaining like 13 episodes um and I had watched all 66 so anyways I came up with an embarrassing um reason um or a reason to make make me look less embarrassed Um, but I'm obsessed with Las Chicas and I'm so glad I found it. I'm just finishing up season two and like I said, I'm obsessed. And I was thinking when I was watching this, when would be the next possible time I could dress up as Lydia? Um, and like, I guess that would be Halloween because I guess where else can you dress up like a roaring 20s telefonista from Madrid? But I don't know if you know <laughs> other opportunities, let me know. Um, a few hours ago, I was like literally like jolted out of a daze because all of a sudden I was browsing champagne coops online. I'm this invested into the show. I had to Google what coops were. Um... They are like those bougie little champagne saucers um, that I now know the word for. Um, And I don't know, they just look so chic drinking out of them that I have a set arriving this Friday. (laughs) 
And I literally drink like champagne like twice a year. What are more occasions that I could drink it for? Because I'm this like this much in a hole for this TV show. I was watching an episode right before I recorded this and I was like, should I start smoking cigarettes? <laughs> and literally like that's like a flashback because I'm pretty sure I said that about Grand Hotel. I'm not like for sure, but I'm, I probably did. It was said in 1904 in, <laughs> in northern Spain. But now we're in Madrid and I'm like, do I need to start smoking with like a holder? Like one of those like chic Audrey Hepburn cigarette holders and should I like get into hats I'm not a hat person tbh like I feel like you either are or you're not a hat person and I'm definitely not um I like try to be sometimes like you know how baseball caps are like super trendy and girls running errands or girls going to class um wear them like I try that too and I just look (laughs) like an absolute troll um and I to be honest I will probably never get into hats um or smoking for that matter (laughs) but um if you see me around and I've cut my hair into like a curled bob and I'm wearing just like a single red lip it means that I'm still into Las Chicas (laughs) and to be honest I think we all know what the common denominator between between Grand Hotel and Las Chicas is I guess you might not know what the common denominator is um but I do (laughs) and Um, Maybe I'll just keep that as like a little secret Easter egg that you can find out if you watch those TV shows. Um, Because if you know, you know, just like if you are a hat person or not a hat person. Um, I want to talk a little bit about The Bachelor because of course I do. Um, I really wasn't going to watch Colton Season this year. I just thought like... I'm not super interested in him and I'm kind of over the TV show like all of the tropes and like most of it is just the same every single season um and when I talked about the promo in episode three um I just was like I don't know if I can do this but of course um they pulled me back in um like I (laughs) I keep coming back for more And the premiere finally happened, and as I said before, the only reason I'm watching this is there's literally a three-second clip in the super tease where Colton is jumping over a fence and, like, running away from production, and I am hook, line, and sinker. Take my money. I'll watch this, even though I'm probably hate-watching. I will watch this season and I hate that they do this. They get me every single year, but I feel like I'm so ingrained in the Bachelor Nation that it's really hard to leave. Um, And I know how dumb that sounds, but I don't know. Like Mary Kondo says, if it doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. And um, I should get rid of it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to maybe next season uh so anyways um the season premiere was three hours and again it was like why do you do this to yourself like you don't have two hours or in this case three hours to watch an episode of The Bachelor every week and then I'm kind of like who are you kidding I totally do but (laughs) Um, the viewing parties, which is what made it three hours for those uninitiated, um, were fucking painful. Like, they were absolutely brutal. And I fast forwarded, or we, because I was at a viewing party, um, myself. (laughs) And it wouldn't have been good if we taped it. Like, straight up, it would be boring AF if we taped our viewing party. And we don't want to see the viewing parties in like nobodyville usa um we fast forwarded through 99 percent of them 
except for when like Caitlin Bristow and Jojo Fletcher were on the screen because we love them. I also want to give a shout out to Jason Tardick because his post-bachelorette glow up is amazing. Definitely had a lot of potential. Some people are like, what glow up? He looks the same or like he was really hot before, but it's like just these little things like a little tan, a little teeth whitening, a little less hair gel and he looks great. Um... And just, okay, like, a little random side note. It's Sunday now, and he was with Caitlin Bristow all weekend, like, at the bar and again at the bar, and now they're at a basketball game, and I'm incessantly going through their Instagram. But I am really into that couple, and I know that it's probably, like, they're just friends, they're just hanging out, kind of hamming it up to get some views but like I'm really really into this couple I think they're both great people and I want to see two great people together I love that like I this is going on one step further into a tangent but I'm like always like a bad matchmaker it's like well I like this person and I like this person so they should date and it's like they have nothing in common like blah 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 but anyways I think they're cute together so back to the premiere I kind of liked that Colden was super nervy like I think that this is the first bachelor that I've been able to tell is like scared shitless and like trying to make a really good first impression on all of these women and all the viewers back at home and I think they had to cut a lot of it out because he was so nervous. And why do I think that? Well, they had so much filler with the live show. But also, one thing that they didn't show was Brie, who went viral earlier this week for putting on an Australian accent when she met Colton. And um, I thought that that was so strange because it was a viral clip. She's like blowing up everywhere everyone's talking about this like controversy which I personally loved I thought it was so smart she didn't technically lie to him she said the accent was Australian not that she was Australian and um I don't know I just thought it was a cute way to stand out um but they didn't even show her um meeting Colton for the second time and explaining that the accent was fake that was uploaded um to the internet the following day as like a cute bonus scene which if you guys are detectives like me you'll know that that means she probably doesn't go very far because they usually show the leads or like the front runners or the people that last till final four they show um their full limo exit they show their full one-on-one conversation and usually you can notice because like the music changes and those type of things so obviously she doesn't go too far but I think she's absolutely beautiful and I thought that that was a really cute gimmick that didn't seem gimmicky she didn't come on in like a Cinderella carriage or like in a weird costume which I don't even want to talk about the sloth, but um, I may say one or two comments because <laughs> it was the fucking worst thing. Um, I liked that they showed Colton, yeah, being super nervous. I think that kind of made him seem more down to earth because he kind of seemed a little bit cardboardy in um, his season of Bachelor and Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise. Um, so I liked getting to see that he was uh, a person underneath all of um, the veneer. Um, and I think that they had to crop a lot out because I think that they always want to show the bachelor being like some suave, has it all together guy and the and the bachelorette as like a really put together, composed woman. Um, so I think that they maybe were a little bit surprised that Colton wasn't as put together, that he was a little bit more nervous and was having difficulty holding conversations or introducing himself. So 
um, I love he had like um, a question. He would just be like, where are you from? To like every girl. So I think that that was kind of his get off the hook, tell me about yourself kind of question that the girls could answer. I also thought it was really funny that they showed him in like an awkward chubby phase as a child because it's like I feel like most people go through like an awko chubby stage um, or maybe you're still in it. Um, talking about myself by the way, not, not any of the listeners. But um, like it's like I feel like everyone has that. So it was just funny. It was like this changed me as a person. It was like yeah you and the rest of us buddy like everyone looked bad in grade fucking seven with like braces and acne and like a little bit of baby chub like you're just a normal person anyways um told us a little bit more about him which I liked and they showed um the girls inside the limo which I thought was really cool because usually we don't get to see that so it was kind of like insider baseball that we got to see um, that they're all in the limo and um, get cute to come out and stuff like that. As you can see, I really like dissecting like the production of The Bachelor just because I think it's really interesting how they put the story together and um, just these little things that you pick up and notice over the years. Um, anyways, um, Cassie, she was the one that entered with the box full of butterflies um which was like kind of cute kind of whatever but if you notice Colton at the end there was like one single butterfly left on the ground and he like picked it up and put it in his suit pocket his jacket pocket and I like died a little bit like it was I just loved it like it was like it was so contrived and a producer was probably like hey you put this in your pocket it would be a good shot it, like especially if this girl goes far like we'll look back on this but it was just like I died I don't know it's just like they really do know how to get like you interested because I was like oh my god that's so cute and it was just like a really cute moment um I don't know I hate that they can do that type of thing to me um, as I said, the sloth costume, Alex, I think her name was, was like literally, it was so bad. She stuck way too long to the bit. And I was really surprised that she went home night one, not because it was so horrendous, but it because um, usually like people in a big costume stay for a little while, like a la Lexus Waters in the shark slash dolphin costume. So, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Um, the premiere, again, was pretty lackluster after that. Um, it's kind of the same show. It goes off without a hitch. The girls are getting mad about other girls interrupting them and taking time. And I don't have enough time. And when am I going to get time? Which it's just like the same old song and dance as every other season. And then, like, the girls being shocked that 25 contestants show up it's like dude this is season 23 it's like every year about 25 people show up 25 to 30 like that's just gonna be the way it goes and I just wish they would ask like 10 people right off the bat so we could get to know the contestants more in-depthly as we go but they it only seems like they took off like five then you have those like awful huge big group dates um that are usually like two opposing teams playing a, a sport um, in bikinis and um, I don't know it's just horrendous so I just wish they would like act like 15 people. Um, we had our own watch watching party as I mentioned before and I literally the episode's kind of wrapping up but I turned to my friend sitting next to me and was like I have the hugest urge to just look at Reality Steve TV spoilers right now. And then <laughs> um, the other guy, my other friend that was in the room was like, me too. <laughs> and um, 
both of the other girls were like one was like I already did this afternoon and I was like I literally just did two minutes ago so I was like I'm definitely with the right viewing party because we're all on the same page and we just spoiled the season right then and there this podcast will be a spoiler free zone but I just thought it was so funny it was like definitely with the right crew because we all had the urge to look at spoilers right at the exact same time Another kind of interesting thing that I saw in um, Bachelor Nation um, was this interview with Deanie Babies um, or Dean Unglert. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last names um, because I just literally call him by his Instagram handle, which is Deanie Babies. Um, But he was recently on Access Hollywood recapping the premiere um, with Becca, uh, pregnant Becca. Becca with a K and he was honestly kind of looking like a scrub (laughs) he was like the cutest boy um in now I don't even remember whose season he was in but he was super cute and he was like kind of wearing like a hat and like had some scruff and like some like really long hair um I don't know wasn't into it Anyways, he was saying that all the bachelor relationships, minus like obviously the ones that are like married and um, have kids, but he said the ones that are dating um, are all like kind of fake and contrived, um, which everyone's like, yeah, no fucking shit, Tori. Like we know this. And I guess deep down I knew this, but when I heard this um, from a bachelor alum, I was just shook to my core. Um, So I did my research for all of you, um, like the good little detective that I am. But that would be the likes of Jojo and Jordan, Crystal and Goose, which I can't believe I'm calling Chris Goose, but here we are. Um, And Becca and Garrett, I literally, there's probably like a hundred more that I'm just forgetting, but that's, that's about the most, the extent of my research. Um, but those people would be fake and those couples would be fake. And I guess like I kind of understand why one might do that. Like obviously there is a huge pressure for the lead to succeed and not have like a failed engagement. Um, and I guess make the most out of it by peddling, um, their relationship out to the masses. There's probably more opportunities, notoriety, fame, money, all of that type of stuff. People really want to see the couples together and hear about life after The Bachelor and how the process is real and all of that type of stuff. So I don't know why, again, that this news shook me to like the depths of my core, but it really did. And like he also mentioned that people like get so caught up that it seems like they love being in a relationship more than they love the person that they're with and I just thought that that was very astute um I was kind of off of Deanie Babies for a little bit but I'm kind of back on the bandwagon um yeah but it's I don't know I feel like that's hard to hear because um I really like all those couples that are still together songs Crystal and Goose but um it does kind of seem like they're in it for fame or Instagram likes and all of that type of stuff. But I'm like, how could you fake a relationship for like three years or two years or one year or whatever? Like that seems so hard to do. And like maybe you're closer friends, but like is all of that worth like being off the market, um, pretending to like somebody? Um, like is is that all worth it? I don't know. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think those relationships are fake? Do you think they're real? And like, please only if you're a Batch fan, because if you're not, you're just going to say no, I feel like. But if you really know the intricacies of Bachelor like I do, um, I would really, really want to hear your thoughts. See if, if you think that they're fake, just doing it for a short time to get fame and more opportunities or if you think that they're the real deal because it would be sad for me to think um that they're not the real deal um even if they date for like three years and then break up like I still think that that's a win um like a success in bachelor's books um because I again think that's real so 
Um, it would be sad for me to hear that. And then it's like these people that got married after a while, was that contrived and then it just ended up working or is that like all not real? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to pass judgment. Well, I guess I do because that's literally the point of this show. But I don't know. It would just be interesting to hear your thoughts or have more candid interviews from Bachelor alum because I know that a lot kind of toe the Bachelor line because, you know, ongoing opportunities and all of that type of stuff and they don't want to slander like the company that gave them kind of their start but I don't know it was just super candid and I really appreciated that. So now if you want to listen to three ladies uh, Ingrid, Alyssa, and Michelle who seem like they have their shit together unlike me (laughs) Um, They talk about the OC. I've got the perfect podcast for you. Remember when you were in grade school and died to watch the OC every week? I literally had to look it up and I was in grade five when it first came out and in grade nine when it ended, which is insane, like absolutely insane to me. I have no idea how I was allowed to watch this show because I feel like like shit went down on it. Um... And then I was kind of like, how did I even do it? Like, I live in Canada. Did they play it on much music? (laughs) I don't know. I thought it was like a CW show or anything. So I'm like, how did I even watch this? And how was I allowed to watch this? Anyways, I definitely thought my high school days were going to be filled with fun beach parties with those red solo cups and like cute boys that move into your neighborhood. Um after getting like kicked out of your parents house and like you were in jail and stuff they were in jail I don't know um I'm rambling now but I definitely thought that my high school would just be like piping hot tea like when your friend's mom sleeps with your other friend's ex-boyfriend which now that I'm saying that out loud is super fucked up and like hella legal but that's what the OC is Uh, When Marissa in the premiere episode goes, hey, who are you? And Ryan goes like, whoever you want me to be, I die. Like I I absolutely die. Something inside of me crumbles. Um, And that shit never happens in real life. (laughs) It sets your expectations way, way, way too high. And maybe that's why I'm constantly disappointed. (laughs) anyways I'm just gonna move past that um you best believe in high school I downloaded all of the OC mixes with all of their iTunes album covers for my iPod Nano that was bright purple um and thought I was the coolest person ever downloading all of this indie music from probably the most mainstream TV show ever um but If you were a fan of the show then or now, you should check out Let's Talk OC, a podcast from the girls of It Takes Three. Let's listen to a little clip right now. Newport Beach, The Pool House, Captain Oates, Chino, ew, I'm Michelle, I'm Liz, and I'm Ingrid, and we're Let's Let's Talk Talk OC. We're the ladies that brought you Tree Hill Talk, and now we are on the West Coast talking about the early 2000s teen drama, The O.C. Join us every Monday as we watch and review each episode. We hope you can join us. You can check out the girls at ittakes3network.com and find their pods on iTunes and YouTube. I can't wait to hear what they have to say about season four, because that shit was a train wreck. Okay, everybody, I had a blast talking Bachelor, Las Chicas, Del Cable, and much more. Let me know what you want me to talk about next and what you are petty about this week. It's also super helpful if you leave a five-star rating and review so we can find new listeners. I'm your host, Tori, and as always, I'm ready to be petty.